Are there are there buttons that Mike presses that? Yeah, and I forgot to press it. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone has a unique gift, and Mike, the creator of the One Life podcast, believes most people don't know how to use their gifts or what they are. Mike wants you to see things from a different perspective and be true to yourself. The One Life podcast unites the world through art, fashion, music, and film. It inspires, motivates, and creates positive energy, love, and compassion to all communities and creates an equal playing field for all. On the One Life podcast, they cover topics like building relationships, overcoming adversity, habits of healthy people, and much, much more. We only have one life to live. Be yourself and live your truth. Add the One Life podcast to your playlist. That's the number one in e-life. Available on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and your favorite podcast platform. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the One Life Podcast. I am Mike M.I.C. Reed, and as always, got my co-host, Diana Gotti from Navy Wellbeing Coalition, doing it the Gotti way. Hey, what's going <laughs> on? What's, what's good? What's so, good? you know, in television, they do like 100 takes to get one thing. That's true. So, this is only two. We're doing yeah. very well. I love these Stellar. numbers. I love yeah. these numbers. <laughs> and it's rare that we do, too. Yeah, I know. It's very rare. It's, it's very only when Mike's <laughs> off. <laughs> it's Friday. I'm just saying. It's, this is one of those days. Um it's okay. It it's right okay. <laughs> hey, I'm struggling. I'm struggling, but struggling well. There you go. There you go. That's there right. Go. That's right. And so today we got our special guest with us, Sandra from House of Beauty Body Scoping with us hey, today. Happy hey. Friday. Thanks happy for Fridays. Me. No, thank yeah. you for going. And um, we're going to get into our conversation with you um, because we have a lot to talk about because mm-hmm. I had to dig deep to <laughs> find out about you. But um, what's going on with the communities? Well, I actually am super excited to give a shout out to our 10 graduates from our leadership program. Um, Their ceremony will be this coming Wednesday, and I'm so excited for all 10 of them. The best part about all of that is each each participant will be receiving a $500 scholarship for college. So what better motivation to keep going and investing into our our uh, future leaders that's dope i love it yeah that. so so i'm um, i'm really excited for them yeah and um and again i actually also want to put out there if you have not registered for the certification apply positive psychology please 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 um just apply get your application in there are grants um you can reach out to miss nardi lopez at the city of palmdale or you can just follow uh mike and i we're we're putting all the information out so i definitely definitely encourage everyone not only that from I did hear that they are uh, requesting for more male. Yes. Male I mean, even though I don't mind being the only male with a bunch of women. Like, hey, this guy. <laughs> always a good time. <laughs> However, yeah, come on, fellas. Come on, join me. Yeah. Let's get our energy up. Let's get our positive energy up. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to definitely be here. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. I know I thought about that. In our leadership, we actually have almost like a 50-50. I was um, really, really glad to see a lot of the gentlemen in there and enjoy what it is that we're doing so good stuff good stuff yeah all right is that it that's it i ain't got no shout outs today you know what did you do last friday <laughs> you know what mike because this friday you know what i'm chilling <laughs> this friday what did you do last friday okay. i know what i did uh, oh no mike, she no, see sandra today no. no sandra so you got to understand <laughs> She know why I'm doing this to I'm her, and I it. told her last Friday I was going to do this to her. Oh my god! And last and yesterday in our meeting, she told me not to do it, but you know I was going to do it. You got to give me some grace though. I was ready to <laughs> it go. It was like one of those yes, yeah, right or no. So I, I had a party at my house for my okay. girlfriend. Okay, and um, <laughs> she was supposed to come. Oh, no. No, I actually was ready to come. However, my yes. husband worked um, That's overtime. That's not fair to blame it on him. And, he's and not here to defend himself. no, see, <laughs> I send you evidence of my husband snoring. And yeah. I actually waited for my niece. She was supposed to come up as well. And she didn't make it out. And I just got so upset. I was like, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm going to bed. And then shortly after that, he wakes up. Everyone's asleep. Lights are off. And he's all, you were supposed to wake me up. I woke him up three times. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. You did. Oh, you put in the effort. You did. You did send me the picture. I man. did. I felt oh. really, really bad. And I know he also reached out. Yeah, he did. He yes. did. Next day, he did. Happy belated your girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Appreciate that. Did you guys have fun? We had a lot of fun actually. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I was I was very grateful for that day. Uh, her whole family. It was only supposed to be a small gathering. 
for like maybe 10 to 12 people. Oh. It was like 40 people showed up. Wow. Hey. And that was all her you family. See? Oh. You see? Yeah, it was She's it loved. was something intimate. Well, she she's is. No, she's very loved. She's absolutely oh, loved with person. 40 then. Yeah, she's a good there person. Go. So we had a good time. Well, we're going to boogie next week, right? I don't know about this boogie thing. You keep <laughs> mentioning this boogie thing. Well, you know what? What's next week? It's because, you know, people dance, gangsters boogie. What's I'm a gotti. What's next week? Uh, the women's conference in Los Angeles. Oh, that's right. That's right. I yeah. forgot about that already. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, wait, that's a is that dancing afterwards? Well, it is at a cantina, so it is a bar. Oh, see, you know what I'm you know. saying? <laughs> that's what dancing it. regardless. Okay, okay. Get women in a room and <laughs> you know I have soccer the next morning. Whoa. I can't be taking off. They got mad at me Monday. <laughs> I'm, yeah, because that Monday I practice, so I coach AYSO soccer oh, okay. league in Valencia. Oh, that's so nice. every Saturday yeah. morning we have a game, and last Friday since I threw this little gathering at my house, I didn't realize that many people was gonna show up. So I didn't know they are making it again. Shame on you, Coach Mike. And then Monday, they all got on me. It was Twice. like. Twice. You, you weren't yeah. anticipating on that many yeah, people. So see. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> so you trying to get me to hang out Friday, next Friday night, knowing I got to be somewhere else. In going. Los Angeles. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> I'm playing you. Might as well just spend the night at the, mm. at the fields. <laughs> right. Anyways. All right. Let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. So, Sandra. Yay! Hi. For a certified <laughs> body skin specialist. Yes, sir. I actually won something. You did. I you did. did. Yeah. You did. Remember, I won that raffle with Lily and Sochil. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Was it was it um, Lily's makeup? Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. So I get makeup, hair. Did you did you redeem all that? No, I haven't, and I was supposed to redeem it for my headshots. However, I want to save it because i have so many events coming up yeah. um uh this the year not important it is, is important <laughs> are you saying our oh, our no. season three promo is not important <laughs> but is you know what, what you're saying <laughs> you know the beauty of it is that i got a picture in there right mike so <laughs> i gave her a month <laughs> head like heads there's nothing up there for anyone to see i told her i said if you don't if you don't do this headshot i'm gonna go on ig and just grab a picture mm. And use it for the promos. And I did last. No, I actually did that this morning. Yeah. <laughs> but it looked good. I was like, ooh, well, that's one of the ones I like. That's because I'm good at what I get do. Get it, Mike. I almost <laughs> used yeah. the one of you at the beach. Which one? Oh. I went deep into your Instagram. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I went deep. You and went I allowed you onto my personal ones. So yeah. Personal and, one. and that's where I was, yeah. the personal one. Because I knew I would find a bunch of bitches in there. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, good. You know what? This Speaking of body sculpting, um, my husband was going through old pictures. And I was like, dang. Like, during COVID, I think I was, like, at my best weight shape of my life. And I was telling them, I'm going to get back there. I'm going I'm to do that. Although I'm good. I have been consistent with the gym. So That's I'm good. very proud of that. That's good. That's good yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people, I think, um, regressed in so many ways throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, in so yeah. many ways, physically, emotionally, mentally. Mm -hmm. um, it took a toll and it changed so many people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the fact that you're getting back into the gym mm -hmm. and you're being consistent, that's a start. Consistency is key, for sure. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Everything in life, consistency is key. It'll get you to where you need to go. Yeah. Um, it'll get you to achieve what you want. Um, consistency is key. So, yeah. That's awesome. How long? How long have you been consistent with working out? <laughs> Two weeks. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, but I just got, I, but I, you know what it was? Um, it was on a Sunday and my husband wakes up like super early. It was like seven o'clock and he's like, I have all this energy and I just, I can't just lay here. I was like, just, just lay there. It's yeah. very easy. And he goes, no, we got to get up. We got to do something. He goes, let's go to the gym. I was like, Aww. it's Sunday. Or it's even my hike. day off, you know? And he's like, no, like, I'm just going to go. And I said, give me five minutes. <laughs> I will go with you. And I did. I actually did. And um, my kids are on spring break this week. So uh, my daughter is my, well, she's not so much of an accountability partner because every time I tell her, let's go, she's like, oh, my legs hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm more of her That's accountability right. partner. Aww. But we've been getting it in. And I actually like it. I mean, I grew up being an athlete, so I played soccer. Um, and my body, I think, just still reacts to that. You know, so I'm excited. It, it makes me feel good. And then I'll come see you for my faha. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. There's so many, and there's so many benefits to it. Um, 
yeah, I, I recommend working out with some kind of support. Mm -hmm. So it helps because, you know, we have you know, different types of fats. But yeah, I think um, visceral, visceral is what's uh, above yeah. the surface. And that's what you want to get down first. So yeah, so right. maybe some kind of waist trainer or faja. Yeah, that's, that'll help for sure. Well, the body's elasticity, right? And it's yeah. like almost like memory phone. And if you go back to it, you know, that's why a lot of women after they have their babies, that's the first thing that they put on Absolutely. is you have to train, you know, retrain your muscles. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there's a, a, yeah, there's a science to all of it. Yeah. yeah no, for sure. Is key, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I know. And I think I also want a gift card, right? Uh, it was, yeah, it's for um, a seaweed detox body wrap. Um, it's intense. It's intense. Ooh, Before tell me you, about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's um, like my signature um, detox and you get results that they're everybody, every, you know, we all have different body types, mm -hmm. you know, different types of skin elasticity, different um, levels of fats in certain places. I think a woman's body is beautiful. I think um, regardless of the shape, the size, I think a woman's body is just magical because you can really, with consistency and with various types of treatments and, you know, you getting to know your body, there's so many, so many ways to treat yourself and you don't have to see results overnight, but small progress, um, just that 1% progress and a consistent progress, it adds up to the big picture and you start seeing major results. But with the seaweed detox body wrap, um, there's so many, so many components, um, body scrubbing. So but there's, I'm going to mm -hmm. tell, tell you now, it's going to get a little messy, yeah, but no, it's, it's worth it. And yeah. it is the most relaxing thing um, you can experience. So um, we start off with a body scrub. So mm -hmm. we scrub down and a lymphatic uh, massage goes into the whole scrubbing. So, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of like pushing down, a lot of pulling and tugging, but not painful. It's all goodness. Mm -hmm. It's all good stuff. Um, so with the body scrub, it's like detoxing, getting your blood circulating. But I started off with, so let me rewind a little. I started off with the breathing exercise because it, um, deep breathing and it's like gut uh, breathing and that helps circulate our blood and it helps our body just start um, kind of like doing like an internal blood type yeah. of exercise so um, getting blood flow going um, we do a body scrub full body scrub um, with the lymphatic lymphatic massage from toes all oh the way goodness. yeah it's hey, intense my. it is intense <laughs> um, but it's good you're going to be detoxing well anyways we uh, wrap with um, seaweed um, in the summer, I, I only do the fresh seaweed in the summer. Yeah. Um, but throughout the year, um, I, I don't stick to the fresh seaweed because it's really hard to, to of find course. and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, it's awesome. So we get the seaweed going in like the target areas. A lot yeah. of women stick to the midsection and the arms yeah. or the midsection and the thighs or just like the entire body. And wrapped up, you allow your body to go ahead and provide that natural heat. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because we, we heat up quickly. Exactly. Um, and then we um, go into a sauna. Um, and after the sauna, it's about 40 to 50 minutes. Um, and your body just releases a lot of toxins. I think there might be in one of my highlights. Um, I literally pull up the bag, like after the client sits up, pull up the bag and there's just like water. And it's like just your body having released a lot of you know that the toxins and you're literally yeah. detoxing two to three days afterwards too so hydrating like Ooh, there's no tomorrow you might need a double bag for mine we'll double bag it we'll double bag that yeah um, we're gonna be detoxing man. yeah so i'm um, excited yeah i mean it's really good for your digestive system um yeah. i afterwards i do like a detox tea you can sip afterwards to kind yeah. of relax and continue that detoxing so how, how long is that whole session um it's almost two hours but it's oh, really wow. worth it no you'll see the results yeah I'm, I'm, it's on my page you'll see the results um you know some women start you you, you start noticing like like your abdominal area kind of yeah. like pull up and sink in the seaweed has um certain uh elements that help the skin tighten and you can see it you you'll see oh, it. Shit. And, and, this, yeah. this summer at the beach <laughs> i'm yeah. beginning it with you'll the seaweed see it, but i combine oh that and, and you shouldn't be doing it like every week it's it yeah. should be like a two-week type of thing because you really just detox and you huh. feel it for two to three days later like you feel like there's some women that you know release um they excessively urinate and it's just the body letting go of like the stuff that, that should not be on our inside or some people defecate and 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 it's a severe one but it's a healthy one where you just really your body just releases 
a lot of that gunk that is oh my god yeah i was unaware that of that Oh my yeah. goodness! I'm so excited. Yeah, well, when, when can I redeem my? <laughs> See, that's why I needed to do all this before I did the headshot. No, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I have to warn you: two weeks before, yeah, no sugary drinks. So, yeah, I know, uh, no sugary drinks, um, no liquor, no smoking, and oh. you hydrate like the- mm. that. Just that just x you out of that. No liquor yeah. for two well, weeks. Her, I, Maybe <laughs> after her next week. Kind of wondering, like, oh my god. <laughs> Although I'm not a I'm not a crazy drinker, I used to be. She's trying to yeah. convince herself, right, Mike? Did you see what no, I saw? But I, no, I, and I was really looking that. for pictures. Yeah. Every picture I came across, I was like, "Oh, I won't use that." But you had a drink in your hand. <laughs> you're such a liar. <laughs> you're a liar. I'm, I'm not. not. <laughs> you're my witness, and so is everyone else. I told Diana. <laughs> No, although the one I did want to use was from the gala and I had a drink. Like, exactly. cheers, y'all. He yeah, goes, no gauntlets. He's like, Two we're not using more. that. So, oh my God, yeah. it's so fun. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It, it's it's an intense yeah. detox situation. So two weeks before, no sugary drinks, um, no smoking, no liquor, um, eating clean. So a lot of yeah. greens, um, okay. salmon, a lot of, you know, fish and things like that. Um, staying away from like, you know, like fatty, like, Potato chips and you yeah. know, things like that, candy bars. Two weeks is a long time. It is. No, it so is. But easy. I it, mean, honestly, I like it can that. Look at our mindset, Mike. <laughs> yeah. You know, one, I'm not too crazy on. Believe it or not, I'm not too crazy on sweets. I don't really drink and I don't smoke, so that's in the bag. And we love like seafood and we eat at home, mm-hmm. so I cook. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I do. So that's I can manipulate that a, a whole lot. Easier. Okay, that's perfect. So two yeah. weeks before that, just okay. really committing. Um, and then, you know, your two hour treatment. And then okay. afterwards, you're detoxing for two to three days and you're just yeah. flushing out. You're probably going to go down a size. I mean, everybody's different. So, yeah. you know, there everyone's I results. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll I need to do a back to back. Yeah, no, even two to three days afterwards. Yeah. And then okay. just doing, you know, getting a little more active and you're already yeah. working out. So yeah. you can keep that routine going so have, yeah. you, have you ever had a client okay. that didn't follow those instructions the two week thing oh my gosh, can my, you tell yes you can tell i can and i can tell too like if i'm doing radio frequency mm-hmm. on like an abdomen um the gel that i use yeah. it kind of evaporates quickly and i'm like mm. huh. <laughs> wait a minute yeah. um no yeah um you know it's we're women and we're imperfect mm-hmm. so yeah. there's gonna be times when they're like yeah you know I, I I did do this or I, I was supposed to do that but I didn't quite um and so you know it's it's okay but you know I I'm so committed to what I'm doing and I believe in what I do so does that but that does that uh switch up do you have to pivot when you when you're doing your techniques or um no I stay on track <laughs> with what I do because I know it works Mm -hmm. Um, so what I usually, you know, do, and, and there are things that I'm not going to be able to tell, but like, that's one telltale for me. Mm -hmm. Um, the other, the other ways that I can tell too is for example, if I know the, um, you know, the, the treatment that the person received previously before coming in that second time, for example, um, they, if they're not on their menstrual cycle and mm-hmm. they're like bloated, I'm like, Ooh, wait a minute. Did you have something highly spicy or mm-hmm. something like that? Um, and they're like, yeah, you know what? This week I was just really free. And I'm like, okay, you, you should be free, but also maybe balance that out. And, you know, with recommendations and things like that. Um, but yeah, no. So, you know, it's teamwork for me. It's always teamwork. I, right. I, I can, I, I'll, I'm going to always go 110% always, um, and you need to do your part. So we team up. That's that's always my agreement. We right. have to do teamwork in order to be able to get your goals. Your goals are always going to be my goals plus because okay. my name is on this, because mm. it's my business, because I believe in you. I believe in your body. Um, and I, I want the results just as bad as you want the results. So we got to team up. It's okay if this week, you know, yeah. you, you didn't hydrate as much or, you know what, um, Whatever they're going through, yeah, um, yeah I'm graceful. I'm graceful. But I like that. Commitment like, is important. I like yeah. that how you how you just raised that like teamwork because something yeah. like that it, it is yeah. is you and them your, your yeah. client it, and it's a teamwork. 
Absolutely. Um, it's so important. Um, you know, I may not be for you if, right. if you're just going to be on and off. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you're going to be committed to you, then I'm going to be committed twice as much to you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you recommend that treatment how often? You say every two oh, weeks detox, or yeah. body wrap? Um, yeah, every two weeks, yeah. Because okay. you, you, it's like you can dehydrate your body. Um, oh, okay, okay. You need to make sure that the minerals and things like that, it sinks into the skin. You allow your body to process it. And the minerals that you're actually intaking with food and different things like that, that it also does its work. Okay. So it helps clean your system out. Yeah, because yeah. so, I turned 40 this year, so yay. I'm going to do this for me. Is yeah. there anything on this? Yeah. Like, you know, uh, I'm always on your IG. Um, is there <laughs> anything on this for men? Or just this all women thing? <laughs> no, well, I I've mean. I've been looking at all women. I don't yeah. see how you couldn't do this. I'm looking at all women, so that's what I'm asking. I, yeah. I treat women, yes. <laughs> but I know I know that there are others that, that also help So women. you just do women? I do. You have no I men just, clients? No. <laughs> okay. Is that a specific reason for that? or? Um, no, I just, my niche is, you know, a woman's body is, is different than, than a man's body. Mm. And I feel extremely confident. And I'm not going to ever do something that I know that, you know, could not, maybe not harm a man I, i'm not too yeah. familiar with a man's body the man's in that body. sense so that's I'm, honest though it is that's and I, I have to be no, real I with that. you i i'm i always keep it honest um and transparent with my clients and you know i know the woman's body and that's my niche and no that but you. that makes sense though yeah like you specialize in that and, and it, like you said everybody's body is different so i can yeah. understand yeah. That's beautiful, though, that especially in Women's Month, we are in March, <laughs> yeah. right? So and the fact that you are willing to kind of walk that path with women, that it's very hard. Oh Honestly, gosh. when you're talking about the way you look, the way, um, you know, your weight and the way you feel, it's very hard to kind of walk into that or even right. for myself, you know, to have that conversation, right. but it's a reality. But if I ignore it, I'm not going to get any better. Right. And I, and I just want to say that, yes, it is women's month, women's history mm -hmm. month, but I feel blessed that for me, it's women's history month, women's history day, every day. I That's feel fast. blessed mm -hmm. for real. I feel blessed that I get to work on women every single day Right. and I enjoy it. I, I love seeing their results. We cry together in the mm -hmm. treatment room. We, we rejoice together. We share stories together. And we have those silent moments where they literally just, you know, I'm going through something. Okay, cool. Let's do a silent treatment today. And I'm going to help you breathe through it with my breathing exercises. And let's center you today. Um, let's take care of you and your needs today. Um, yeah, but I, it is Women's, women's Month. But I do it every day, and mm -hmm. I celebrate women every day. I get that opportunity to celebrate women every day. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about bodies, and we talk about yeah. how you know different experiences in, in their childhood, their lives have affected who mm -hmm. they are today, and yeah. how that's affected their body and, and things like that. But I think it's it's also important to you know there are I know with body sculpting um, there are various opinions about it and. You know, some people feel like, oh, it works. And some people are like, it doesn't work. And then there's people that like, you know, why do I, or for example, the, the clients that I have that get work done, like plastic mm -hmm. surgery, cosmetic surgery, um, you should just own your body type of thing. They're, they're various opinions mm -hmm. and they're all welcome. They're all awesome opinions because without opinions, then right. what, 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 is, what is life, right? Yeah. Um, but I think it's a special thing that, you know, someone that someone wants to go on a journey and, you know, a lot of it derives from their childhood and, and they're now grown women and, and they've gone through things in their life and they want to get work done and they go ahead and get it done. And then they go into this. There's so many phases with post-op, like with women that, that get work done. Mm -hmm. So many phases that people um, don't know about. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of missing gaps and, um, you know, people have a different understanding of why people get work done. Um, and there's so many stories, I mean, countless stories of why women get the work that they've done and that they do and why they decide to go off on those journeys. Well, let's talk about that because I know yes. I, was, I was just reading something where um, you're, you're big on domestic violence and um, cancer survivors. And that's one of the reasons Ooh. why you do what you do <laughs> um, because of that. 
Yeah, Mike, thank you. I, I really enjoy this space. Thank you so much for this. Um, I am a huge advocate for anything women. Um, I think a woman's femininity is everything, everything. I think as mothers, sometimes, you know, we go through phases, especially at the beginning of motherhood, you go through phases of, and please help me circle back to this. <laughs> no, no. Um, I think as women, we go through various phases in life and cycles. And I think, um, especially the beginning mothers, you know, the, the rookie moms, the yeah. ones that are barely starting their journey in, into the world, the beautiful world of motherhood, you oftentimes lose a little bit of your identity, a little bit of your femininity, mm -hmm. right? I know it happened to me where I was just like, struggling like oh my gosh there's no manual to how to be a mom or mm -hmm. like but you just you leave the hospital and you're just like um okay so if the you know diaper resemblance looks like this and your child is healthy and things like that there's a lot that you're learning as you go including our bodies so when sometimes you, you lose a little bit of your identity you, you kind of forget because you're so acclimated to being mom to being caretaker and and wife and you know whatever else and you you start to just kind of your body becomes second fiddle to everything else that you have on your list you don't prioritize you um so with that sometimes we kind of lose focus of who we want to be what we want to look like and how do we want to present ourselves to the world other than being mom with you know our you know messy buns in our whatever okay no no it's cute <laughs> oh no but that's that's my no, thing now it's no it's cute my messy bun because it's sometimes the easiest thing to do to be is. out the door Absolutely. and still be presentable this is my easy thing yes <laughs> yeah for, for real and and you know I I I have been there and I understand and um women that lose their femininity lose a lot more than people think they do. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like part of my responsibility, part of my job is helping them retrieve that, mm -hmm. helping them regain that. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, helping them feel like, oh my God, like I'm getting a little bit of my curve here or I'm feeling lighter, I'm feeling slimmer or I'm feeling more confident about myself. That means everything to me and we will get there and we will take steps and we'll do what we need to do. But going back to um, being an advocate for domestic violence and it'll tie into this. Um, my grandmother is um, a big reason of why um, I've taken this on. Um, my parents were always working um, as, as a little girl. My parents were, you know, like a lot of immigrant families. Mm -hmm. um, they come to this country and they put their head down and they work and they That's work right. and they provide for their family. So, you know, coming from I'm the only female in my family, there's four, four boys, four brothers. So that's where football comes in, Mike. Hey. <laughs> football and sports. I was just talking about yeah. that. I was like, are you ready for Dodger season? <laughs> Opening day is Thursday. And he's like, yeah, I can't really sit there and watch him. I was like, what do you mean? I oh, feel she's a line. huge Cowboy fan. Yeah. So yeah, just oh. me and her got in common. So yeah, we're Cowboy fans. You know I'm a... You, you know what my We're not talking about that right now. We're okay. oh, <laughs> just throwing we'll it out there. We'll go back to football in a minute. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, so domestic violence. So my grandmother um, came from Mexico to, you know, she lived with us. I think I was the only college student that brought her grandma to spend the weekend in the dorms at one point. And, you know, it's just, I saw it as normal. Like, abuelita, I miss you. I, mm -hmm. Just come spend the weekend with me. Have somebody drive you up. Um so I was really, really close to my grandma, but she was um, the most beautiful woman, just really, um, you know, my mom felt like she needed to bring in an, a, another female in the house while she worked graveyard shifts at night. Um, and my dad worked long hours. Um, so my grandma was that female figure. And um, excuse me, um, just a beautiful woman. Just such a wise, wise soul. She loved herbs. Yeah. She she co just cured everything with yerbas and <laughs> right. Oh, it's so true. And yeah, so many natural ways to to healing, but and be connected to nature. Absolutely. Yeah. And she um, 
was illiterate. She didn't know how to tell time, didn't know how to read or any of those things. But she was so smart. And she married or she was married off at 15, um, had started having family right after uh, 12 in total children. Um, her husband, he would just, um, she was just a victim of domestic violence. Yeah. And as I grew up, um, she would tell me these stories um, with so much pain. And when she passed away of cancer like eight years ago, but sometimes it feels like it was just yesterday. Yeah. Um, and I was so close to her. And she, um, close to her passing, um, she showed me her scars in places that I can't even imagine. Just, yeah. you know, I, I, I never asked her. And I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I never asked her, you know, what did he do to you? Or how are these scars in those places or you know what happened I'm glad I never asked that because I don't know that I could you know yeah. um I I just I don't know but I, I'm I'm glad that she showed them to me because that stayed with me and it, it was like a piercing moment for me like oh my gosh like what she must have gone through something so bad so negative so heavy all these years and I've and she we shared a room when mm -hmm. as as a child growing up and I never saw, she wore certain types of clothes, but I just thought, oh, my grandma, she's so, like, right. you know. So, conservative. Yeah, she's so conservative. Yeah. And, and she was, but um, she had these scars that I saw, and I was just so beside myself. I couldn't believe, like, the places that she had them in and what how deep they were and how protruding her skin looked. And I was just devastated for her. And she told me she's, you know, she. She would. She she told me that one day, um, I all those stories I told you. That's because I didn't. I never wanted you to, you know, ever go, go through, through things that. like mm -hmm. go through things like that. And if you ever have the opportunity to help someone, do it. And if you ever have the opportunity mm -hmm. to give back, give back. And I was always taught give back. Even as a child, um, my grandma was a huge advocate of that. But my mom and my dad would always just tell us whenever you have the opportunity, give back because we wouldn't be where we are today if someone hadn't extended their hand. Right. So that's, that's kind of my philosophy I, I've adopted. And, and, you know, I, when someone extends their hand to me, I give them both of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, I was taught to give without expecting to receive. And I do that as much as I can. There are services that, um, there are services that I, you know, sometimes just add in because I'm like, you know what, I think this is going to finish the job. Yeah. Or, and, or I understand as mothers, you know, there are budgets to be had. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, so true, though. I yeah. mean, I could definitely testify to that, mm -hmm. you know, coming from uh, my husband's the only one that in reality works. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I do have my side hustle, but it's not, yeah. you know, really paying the bills. So I, I understand. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so going back to this, um, I feel so blessed um, with having the opportunity to participate with the women's empowerment um, mm -hmm. and helping um, women that have suffered, that are survivors of both cancer and domestic violence. And um, so I, you know, in, in my grandmother's name, um, no one should ever, and no one should ever feel like um, it was their fault. No one should ever feel like, they're less than because mm -hmm. they have those scars. Yeah. No one should ever have those scars as a reminder that um, that they weren't worthy or loved. And um, I've just committed myself to the Women's Empowerment um, Network to go ahead and donate that um, to, to you know to women that approach them for their organization. Um, there'll be opportunities, right, Mike? There'll be <laughs> opportunities yeah. where you can you can receive payment for that. And mm -hmm. but I I I've, I haven't opened that service, and there are people that have reached out, but I haven't opened that service because I want to make sure that I give those women their timeline because there you can't just do one service and be done. It's 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 you know you have to go through phases, like three phases before. Mm -hmm you know, you see where the final product is. And once you see the final product there, you know, there's ink to involved in there's the whole phase. Yeah. But I didn't want to open that service um, until I catered to those women um, that approach the Women's Empowerment Network. And then also um, um, the last phase for women uh, cancer survivors 
um, is a 3D nipple reconstruction. So I wanted to give that because, again, going back to femininity, there are women that have had to have their nipple removed to, you know, extract certain type of cancers, yeah, breast, breast cancers. Cancer. Yeah, it's yeah. my my aunt. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and nipples are a huge part mm-hmm. of our identity as women, our um, femininity, our essence as a woman. And for some women, they don't care for it. Mm-hmm. And some women are just, you know, refuse to you know, go through life with missing something that, you know, identifies them as, as a woman in their eyes. Everyone's different, but um, I want to honor that in, in my grandmother's name. I think she always um, advocated. That's where I got my business name, House of Beauty, because she, um, I didn't understand as, <laughs> as a little girl, I didn't understand. She would say, you have, in Spanish, she would say, you always have to have your house in order. And mm. I just didn't understand, like, you mean yeah. cleaning? Like, no. <laughs> it has to be nice and, mm-hmm. you know, clean and orderly. And that's how I understood it. And through lessons and, and just different conversations with her, I thought, I thought, oh, my God, like, it wasn't just about cleaning. Of course, yeah. you want to have a nice home. But it was about having yourself in order as a woman, you know. Um, you don't have to wear name brand things. And she, that was always her thing. You don't have to wear name brand things to look elegant. You don't have to wear name brand things to feel better about yourself. Yeah. Um, and she would always advocate for, you know, be humble, be simple, um, be elegant in your own way, and have yourself in order. You are your own house of beauty. Yeah, it's so true. That was, that was her thing. And, and so honoring <coughs> that and the lessons that followed with that, um, that's that's my world, and and that's what I'm committed to is and is making sure that as a woman that you you have yourself in order, you have your beauty in order because everyone's beauty is different, and right. everyone's beauty is unique and amazing and stunning yeah. in your own way. Yeah. And so having yourself in order is 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 everything should be everything to you, even if we're mom, even if we're juggling you know pots and pans and wifehood and motherhood and you know, and trying to do our, mm-hmm. our careers and whatnot, um, it is important to have yourself in order at whatever cost. Yeah. So, you know, when I first met you, um, it was last summer okay. at the Sunset at the Hacienda. Yeah, oh, that's where I met her, too. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, where that's I first true. Met you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah. Um, when, when I met you, I, I'm into energy, and I feel people's energy. And I felt this energy... Yeah energy with you and I know we didn't really have a conversation I know it's kind of um crazy but I went day. on I went on your 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 IG and there's one video you did um where you said that you know you're a school teacher as well oh, yeah. and you said who are you showing up for that touched Absolutely. me oh. and I and Thank I like I like that message and from that moment on, I was like, wow, she has a great story. And thank you so much for sharing that story right now. Because oh, now Thank everything, you for having me. Everything makes sense now. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I love, and these, these are the type of stories and interviews I like, I don't even call them interviews, but conversations <laughs> I like to have. Are conversations. Because everything from the name to everything makes total sense, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so at what point, at what point in your life did you, realize one you obviously you you went into teacher um being a teacher first right right but then you started your house of beauty at what point did you realize you was gonna do the whole body scoping oh my gosh thank you for this question um I'm at a crossroads right now actually (laughs) I'm still teaching um I this is my 10th year of teaching um I started teaching high school and then um (gasps) I love that you do that by the way yeah I started teaching high school and then I moved into, my husband and I were teaching um, out in the Valley in Encino. And it was just a commute for us. Mm-hmm. And it was hard because, you know, as a, as a mom, I don't know. It's, I, I like to think it's a little bit different. But um, I, I felt like I needed to be closer to home, to my mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we spent a lot of time commuting. So um, we found a job out here. And the position that was open was for middle school. So I'm like, cool, like. I'm always up for a challenge. Let's go. So um, I did. And it's it's at a hard to thrive school, high priority school. There's not one day that's the same. Um, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> I have two teens. So I know. No. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's a whole other world. Um, yeah. And so what was the question again, Mike? I'm sorry. <laughs> now, at, w- at, at what point okay. did. Because I, I, I get the connection with um, your grandmother right. and you wanting to, you know, um, 
I guess heal these scars and change these scars. Um, at what point did you know you was going into that field, like the body scoping? Okay, so um, well, let me let me just tell you real quick. Um, as as a kid, my I just love school. I love school. I didn't have okay. the best experience at school, and I think that's why I wanted to go into teaching. Um, I was always told, um, you know, my parents were immigrants. Um, I had an elementary teacher's. Squeeze. I didn't understand. Like, you know, a lot, lot of little kids, you just, you're, well, at least culturally, we were taught, you know, never question the teacher. Mm -hmm. Be respectful. And, of right. course, um, never contend yeah. adults and things like that. So um, I, I remember um, I, just squeezing my hand. I was never allowed to be the line leader for whatever reason. <laughs> Um, just squeezing my arm, going back to the line. I just didn't understand. Um, so a lot, a lot of, a lot of things that were, as I got older, kind of were very hurtful. So I ended up, um, also my parents, um, my, not my parents, my, my tia and my tío, my aunt and uncle, um, they came from Mexico and they needed someone to, to teach them, uh, the language. And, um, my dad, I remember he came home and I would always play with like stuffed animals. Like I was a teacher and, you know, they were the students. Escuelita. Mm -hmm. There you go. Escuelita. <laughs> Everyone liked being the teacher, right? Yeah. yeah. And so my dad came home from the junkyard <laughs> one day with like this blackboard. And I was like, this isn't green. <laughs> you know, it was not a green mm -hmm. chalkboard, but you know, he cleaned it up and he put it onto the wall and, you know, got chalk and I started you know it felt more real and <laughs> so I my aunt and uncle showed up and every day and they came to live with us so every day you know at around in the evening time they um I would teach them like from my phonics books you mm -hmm. know the books that I was coming home with and I was able to teach them a little bit of the English language and I was just like okay this is what I want to do so fast forward um I ended up becoming a teacher and this is my 10th year and I have two daughters. I have two daughters and one son. And I always like to think that you lead by example. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always, you know, I saw my mom and my tias. I come from a long line of women, strong women, <laughs> with just grit at its best. Um, and so grateful for that. And my grandmother. So I didn't have sisters. And when I had my two girls, I was like, oh, my God, like, I need to level up. And I need to be that woman <laughs> that leaves something behind for them. And I thought, how can I say, hey, you don't just have to be one thing. How can I, how can I tell them? You, you don't just have to be mom. You don't yeah. just have to be teacher. You can be whatever you want to be, however you want to be, and how, you know, whatever amount of things that you want to do, you can do it. Um, and so it just, I wanted them, I wanted to leave them with that because life is so limited, right? Right. One day we're here, one day we're not. And I thought to myself, I've always wanted to go into the beauty industry. I've always loved it. I, um, identify with women. Um, my grandmother's been a beacon, a pillar. And what she advocated was have your house in order. And, you know, when, whole body sculpting thing started up um you know and I've I've been there where I've I've had three kids mm -hmm. <laughs> so the weight was was there and um so you know working out got certain things done and then certain things not done mm -hmm. and so um I started seeing this and I was like oh my gosh this works and I did my research I did my homework and then um I had um an aunt on my dad's side of the family pass away from post from plastic surgery um she had a year of many complications and she passed away from that so it was unfortunate and it was just a lot of missing information a lot of misinformation many gaps in the process and I, I just felt like you know what I want to do something about this I want to participate I want to um identify with these women and um I just I took classes um I did more research and um, you know, I spent some time, a little MIA, and just kind of grinding it out and seeing, because I, I've always told my daughters, if you're going to do something, do it right. Right. And if you're going to do something, go all in. If you're going to do something, go 110%. And you have to be realistic with yourself. Are you good at it? 
if you're good at it, go full speed. If you're not that good at it, that's okay. Then maybe you need mm-hmm. to pivot and, and, and do something else. Yeah. You have to be honest with yourself because these are, these, in my case, these are women that are trusting you with their bodies. Mm-hmm. And that is sacred. That's hard to do. I, I don't trust people easily. And um, I knew if I have a skill set that is effective, I'm going to go full speed. And, and that's, that's what I've done. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just, you know, I feel like God's blessed me with um, a skill set and yeah. well, well, blessed you, my hands. You, you found your gift that he gave everybody at birth. Mm-hmm. He gave you that gift and you found yeah. it. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. And, and you're, you're doing it. You're, you're doing it. so amazing. Thank you. Like yeah. I, I see you working and, and I see how thorough you are and, and how you speak on misinformation because there is a lot of uh, people out there, you know, that's into, you know, uh, skin <laughs> treatments and all this and that, but they don't give out the, the information. And I love how thorough you are with Rose your information. Cons, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. and that's great. Um, Thank you. I, I, I love it about, even though I, I don't understand half of it, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can see right. that the information is, is correct yeah. because of the way you put it out there. Thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, try. as for me, um, I actually was diagnosed with cancer when my daughter, well, it's eight years now. Oh, um, my daughter so was sorry. five. Um, and um, so the re- how I actually got diagnosed was because I was going to go and get plastic, I was going to get surgery. And so the doctor was checking my thyroids and checking my neck and he goes, huh, how long has that been there? And I said, I had no clue, you know, what he was talking about. Then I went through the process. However, you know, I became to a point where I was just so frustrated. And this was time when social media and everything was developing. So I, again, I shared that I was an athlete and I felt like I needed to look like that again. And I was never going to look like that again. I was about 240 pounds. So I gained a lot of weight. And, um, but what I didn't realize is that there was something that was holding me back. I literally could starve and gain weight, you know, but it was because I had a thyroid Thyroid. deficiency. Exactly. So sometimes we don't know, pay attention to our body. Like you were saying, give ourselves grace um, because we're wanting to look like someone else. Um, But if we do the work with time, everything will, will turn out. But you know, I'm glad that you did go into the in into detail on your why. And as women, it sometimes it's very hard, you know, to accept who we are today. And it doesn't mean that we can shift and pivot and create the person that we will become. You know, it doesn't mean that you always have to be this way. Right. You know, there's a reason. Give yourself grace. You know, like maybe you weren't a um, hundred, you know, feeling a hundred percent, you weren't exercising, you weren't eating correctly. Maybe you were struggling between jobs or whatever may be the case. Um, but now you're in, you know, you're at a place where you can but, um, pivot and maneuver uh, around those hurdles where they can do something like what you're saying, you know, give yourself that space and let's work together. You know, it doesn't mean you have to beat yourself up because, you know, as women, I like that we are touching on this because it's very hard. You know, like in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come see her like after like a month of the, (laughs) but I'm giving myself that, you know, and it was very hard. Like the other day I was literally standing in front of the mirror and I'm like trying to adjust things. I was like, in a few, this is going to go up and that's that's going to go up. That's my mindset. I'm prepping myself there. That's what, when I told Mike, like, yeah, I can do that because I've done it before, you know, where at a point I was like, it's just all water. And then I started seeing myself like, oh my god during and i since you were going through my pictures i actually posted a picture of me in a two-piece suit in my personal you know instagram that i had never done that even before kids but i had to give myself that grace like you worked your ass off to be where you were and that's the reason why i didn't want to do my headshots because i was like i gained way too much (laughs) i gained way too much weight i don't want to remember this right now i'm giving myself that that chance to get back to where I am, but I don't beat myself up anymore. You know what? I love that you said that because I know that um, I always do a progress slide. Mm -hmm. So after like a treatment, for example, some treatments are like a package of three or a package of six, because I always say, you know, except for the detox wrap, you'll see results like, Mm -hmm. like that in the first one, because it's, it's really just the whole process. But I think opportunities, allowing yourself that opportunity is 
a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Many people struggle with that opportunity. How am I giving myself an opportunity? Like this is, these were my expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're still learning your body. Like you're still understanding Mm -hmm. what's underneath all of what you have underneath your clothes. Um, And I have some women that do exactly that. They just embrace they, they say, they're realistic. They're like, you know what? My husband loves my curves. I just want to tone up a little bit. And I'm like, bomb, let's well, go. I always talk about that. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, and it's a beautiful thing. No, like, yeah. You don't have to look all Kardashian yeah. to, to be the it girl or or to be like the ideal woman. Yeah. Absolutely not. And and that that's, I think, a misconception that, that people think like, oh, mm-hmm. you, you help women body contouring and body sculpting. Yeah. You're probably just trying to make them look like Kim Kardashian or whoever else. No. I'm like, actually, no, I, their goal is my goal. And so mm-hmm. if your goal is, Hey, I love my curves and I am working out. Um, but I, I want to cinch down this area, that area. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go. And you know what? Maybe it's a few sessions and they're like, you know what? I love this. I love yeah. this. I'm going to keep it up. Um, you know, as often as I get my nails is as often as I'm, I'm going to come in and get my services mm-hmm. done. So they treat it kind of like when you go refill your nails yeah Mm -hmm. like maintenance and they're like you know what I don't want to go up above this my husband embraces my curves this is what I want to look like I'm good like this and if they're happy that's then I've met my mission Mm -hmm. I've my objective complete I'm good but you know I'm better you also touched on something that's very very important especially for a lot of Hispanic um, women we have generational baggage unfortunately In our culture, in our community, there's a lot of body shaming. A lot. There's a lot of nicknames. Why don't you look like this? And they remind you of, you know, what you're doing and who you are that we don't know how to give ourselves grace. That's something that I had to learn because my mother actually would tell me that no one would ever love me. You know, and then I used to be self-conscious and then I used to be very jealous because of that. And I hope she don't kill me for saying this. <laughs> don't say what, names. Just say somebody. There you go. Somebody there you will go. kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say my girlfriend. So <laughs> No, just don't say there you no, go. No, because, no, yeah. I, mean, she, I mean, she's fine. Um, I think she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Sexy yeah, as fuck. Yeah, she is. Like, but yeah, she is. She, her, her previous marriage, mm-hmm. it was that. Like, yeah. he body shamed her for years. What? So no, that's unfortunate. Right, and she's bad. You, Thank, you know, banging. you know her, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but is. no, but so whenever she get out of the shower, yeah. and thing she's very self conscious. She always covering up. But I'm like, right. babe, why are you covering? Up? Like you fucking sexy. Like stop. Yeah. And she's like, no, because it's mental for her, and she knows it's mental. Mm-hmm. Right. But for years, she had to, uh, you know, go through that. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm I'm actually trying to um, learn to understand what she's going through, but help her at the same time. Yeah. But I, cause I've never had to go through this. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm very curvy, you know, always had very blessed on top and very blessed at bottom and my legs, you know, where I'm never going to look like you, you know, cause our body types never different. So that's sometimes the hardest thing for a woman to understand that embrace how you are and who you are, right. you know, and I've always carried it you know, well, and yes, um, there are times that I do kind of struggle with that, but for the most part, and I've said it a lot of times when I come out of the shower, my husband's like, dang, you look good. And if other things are telling me that we're green light, I already know, you know, but it's probably one of the hardest things that I had to really tell, believe I should say, believe because I, it was hard for me sometimes. I was like, He probably just, you know, does it because we're married or whatever. I would just justify and make up, you know, excuses because my mom would tell me, like, no one would love you when you're fat. Well, shit, I see so many fat women or big women with some good looking men where I'm like, that's right, queen. You know, she's doing something right because her man is right behind her, skipping and hopping. You know what I'm saying? But, I always tell, but for women, it's hard. No, but I, I always tell women, especially like a lot of female friends of mine, it, it's not the outer beauty. It's, if no, you're beautiful on the inside, right. then it's going to show on the yeah. outside. Absolutely. You attract yeah. that. Right. You, you attract, attract that, that yeah. energy. But at an early age, unfortunately, we're told otherwise. Right. It, you it, know? it is unfortunate. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the thing with, with confidence. Yeah. Confidence. You, you know, for us moms that have our daughters at a young age, mm-hmm. letting them know you have to give them also grace. I've been there as as a little girl as well, where you don't feel enough. 
Mm -hmm. or you feel like you don't have something somebody else has physically, yeah. right? Um, but I think it's important. I, I, I strongly believe it is just of utmost urgency mm -hmm. and utmost importance to allow them that opportunity mm -hmm. to feel the way they feel yeah. and, and say, hey, you can feel like this, but remember, you're still developing. You're still growing. Mm -hmm. You have to embrace what you have because thankfully what you have is unique. Yeah. It's beautiful and you're stunning. And when you get older, you're going to understand what I'm talking to you about. You're going to understand who you are and those weaknesses you think you have. Those are, are, are actually your strengths. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about physically. You're strong, and that's all that matters. You have strength, inner strength. Mm -hmm. You have outer strength, and that's what matters. That is what's going to carry you on for the rest of your life. Hold on to that. Our bodies develop. We become, we become, mom, we become mommies. Mm -hmm. Our bodies change, you know? Our thighs pop. But, but that's a beautiful thing. Like, yeah. I, I know there are certain things that I didn't have that, mm -hmm. you know, as, as I became a mom, things came out. And I was like, mm, okay. Right? Nice. <laughs> Heck yeah. Right? Right? And then sometimes you're like, oh, hey, I got to turn this up. Yeah, that's what my husband said what after you, you had do. them kids, girl. But that's a, that's a blessing, yeah, too. Like, yeah, you bring another, is. see, yeah. that's another thing. That's a whole other conversation where you bring a life into this mm -hmm. world. Be graceful with yourself. You've done something huge, yeah. big, and it's, like, priceless. So mm -hmm. who cares if you expanded in this or that other area? Yeah. You brought a human being into this world, and it's priceless. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. You, you've created created something with God and your, yeah. you know, your better half. You, you created something beautiful into this world that's going to go ahead and give back in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. They're not even stretch marks. They're life marks. They are. Because we created life from that, right. you know? Right. And I mean, I, I have come a long way now. I'm just like, I love that. I it love is that, what Diana. it is, but I still didn't do my hair shots. <laughs> You keep reminding him. Oh, I just, yeah. I'm just messing with him. No, but I have come a long way. You know, there was times that I wouldn't even take pictures or look in the mirror or do any of that. Man, sometimes I'm like dancing right when I come out the shower. Like it is what it is. Yeah, I could be like this right now, um, you know, but it doesn't mean I'm going to be like this all the time. But as women, it's hard to pull yes. out of that. So I'm glad that we are having these conversations. And I've had, I have said it that we should be talking to each other about this, you oh, know, yeah. the hardest question or conversations. And there's so much, so many misconceptions mm -hmm. um, and so many, so, so much lack of information mm -hmm. um, or things that women should know. I mean, just some, <laughs> I mean, like I'm going to go back to, to post-op, like girls coming out of surgery, they're women getting botched. Mm. Well, I used to be, I, and we used to do hair transplants, so unfortunately, we would see it from a man's perspective, and it was the hardest thing. At times, I would tell patients, if that woman doesn't love you bald, then eh, she's not the right one for you, and okay. some would say, my wife says, if I don't do this, that she's not going to love me. I, Diana, That's I've, crazy. I've, I've gotten, um, it's unfortunate, but I've, you know, so, some of the younger girls, um, I've gotten boyfriends or fiancés coming mm -hmm. into the treatment room asking me um, when is, I think my girlfriend is, or my fiancé is making up the fact that she's not ready to go ahead and be intimate. And you literally, the girl literally still has bruises from her lipo and not in that phase. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, they feel like, they're just less than graceful and they feel because they, you know, they, they, they purchase the, the procedure that they should have entitlement know. to it. That's so and, sad. And it's sad. And, and I've seen tears, I've seen arguments take place and I'm just like, listen, I'm not a sex therapist, but what I know mm. is that there's phases of recovery and this is just not the phase. So please be mm -hmm. respectful. And I'm going to ask you to leave my treatment room because this is my space. This is your person's safe mm -hmm. space. And if you have questions, then please, re please, yeah. I recommend you go and speak to the surgeon. I wasn't the surgeon. I am here helping her recover and helping her yeah. heal and ha helping her feel well and supported. And you are not part of that equation. So please excuse yourself um, out of the treatment room before today's session is canceled because I, I, I need you to respect me 
what I do and I need you to be respectful of your fiance or girlfriend in my space. Yeah. So I'm so sorry that you're feeling a particular way, but I need you to be respectful. And that's hard. That's, that's hard crazy. because, you know, it, it's also my space. Mm-hmm. And, and my, in my space, um, there are a lot of things that I cannot guarantee because as a woman, you know, our bodies are different and every surgery is different. Every surgeon has their own style. Every recovery is different. And, but the one thing I can guarantee is you're going to come into a safe space. Mm -hmm. And if that means having to excuse somebody out of that safe space, then I'm going to go ahead and do that. So yeah, it's, and they actually become more fertile after that. Some of them don't even know that. Yeah. Some women do. Yeah. They become, that's what I'm saying. They actually become more fertile after a procedure. And that's another thing a that's lot of crazy. women don't know about. Yeah. They get their surgery and they, they start living their regular life, intimacy no. included. And then they're like, oh, my gosh, I, how, I what pregnant. am I going to do? And I'm like, <laughs> she's like, my surgeon never told me about this. No. And, mm-hmm. and I said, there's so much, Mike, so much that is not discussed, mm-hmm. that's not talked about. That, you know, it's kind of like when a woman goes home with their baby for the first mm-hmm. time. There's, a, there's not a manual, unfortunately. And so there's missing information. And some surgeons do the surgery and then they're out they're mm-hmm. done and yep. maybe maybe a follow-up maybe not a follow-up um maybe never i don't know so you would you would think that would all come out in a consultation before everything right some, <laughs> some surgeons are graceful and, yeah. and they provide you with that information <laughs> they just see dollar signs yeah. and they see sometimes insecure some, people yeah some, some and and then some people and that's another thing there are some physicians who have coordinators <laughs> yep. And they're the ones <laughs> setting your appointments and follow up. But if you can get a hold of the, the coordinator, then you're good. Mm-hmm. If you're in good graces with the coordinator, then you're better than good. Um, but some coordinators are coordinating many things for the office or for that specific mm-hmm. surgeon. And maybe you never get that follow up. Um, so there's a lot of things that, you know, as post op care specialists, we go ahead and, and fill those gaps in for some mm-hmm. of these girls. Um, like stitch removals, if you get surgery in Tijuana or anything like that, um, then the U.S. Um, emergency rooms, unless you're in severe conditions, they will not remove your stitches yeah. because mm-hmm. you didn't do the surgery in the States. Right. There's just a lot of information. Some girls, they're, they're, they're getting infections from their stitches because they're like, I don't know who to go to. I don't know what to do because, mm-hmm. you know, these doctors don't want to see me. And it's like, she's like, and I... I, I like some girls, I don't have anyone to transport me, or I do have someone to transport me, but they're not supportive. I'm going to get chewed out for this, and you yeah. know, they don't want to hear anything. It's just so many Liability things. is a huge thing in the yeah. medical yeah. field. Well, yeah, because you mentioned someone's body. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And they don't want to be held accountable because the minute they remove that stitch, that means that everything that happens after that, that they're responsible. For. It's on them. So yeah. liability is huge, and I learned a lot of that stuff in in the medical field, and unless it was doctors that communicated to each other, and then when you're dealing with someone out of the country, you know things things get a little interesting, and and that's why I'm so passionate about mental health for women. In fact, um, I wanted to actually pursue the uh, applied positive sexuality awesome. <laughs> part, yeah, of the mental health. And sometimes when you hear you know positive sexuality, you think oh sex. Well, no, not necessarily, but you know that it comes with a lot of your mental trauma, generational baggage, confidence, you know, intimacy. How are you going to maneuver that? And when you're talking about the men, you know, being more aggressive in reality, that's their that's their conscience, how they're feeling, their insecurities that are putting that on a woman, Mm -hmm. you know, because now their woman's going to be banging and looking, you know, fly. So they need to be territorial on that how do you pivot how do you maneuver through all of that and that's the reason why i'm so like passionate about that actually we're talking about that with miss reina last um oh yeah yeah on on the last show actually off off uh off the mic so that's (laughs) actually something that we want to to brainstorm and maybe it would be good to have um someone like you on there to be able to to carry (laughs) these conversations but they're not the easiest conversations because you're talking to another woman about sex those are intimidating yeah they're scary yes ma'am there's trauma and Mm -hmm. there's baggage and there's misinformation there's education there's 
you know, even embarrassment. Oh, um, yeah. And, and that yeah. leads you to go into, I hear stories, um, a lot of these women that come in, you know, to get services, um, you just, you, you really, I mean, it's just helped me understand women better emotionally mm -hmm. and, and um, understand the importance of, you know, a healthy sexual life. Well, yeah. Well, you know how your business is House of Beauty. Um, there is a doctor that actually she specializes in that and is also a professor at Stanford. And she says that it think of a house, right? There's certain rooms, right? Right. That you do not let anyone into. It's like Beauty and the Beast, right? There is the West Wing. You never go to the West Wing. And that is when you're talking about one sexuality. And then a woman, it's those houses. You could come into this living room, right? There's that one living room. And then you have the living room with all the plastic and stuff. Mm -hmm. You never sit there with any. <laughs> you don't go in there with shoes. You don't do thing. any of that, yeah. right? I'll let you peek at it. I'll tell you a few things, but you can't come in. You know, and it's kind of like that. So when you were saying House of Beauty, and then we started talking about that, I thought about that. It's weighted. It's just like that. Oh, humans, or in reality, it's everyone. Mm -hmm. Our life is like a house. There yeah. are certain rooms you don't go into, right? You can pee. And there are rules. And there are rules. There are rules. There are rules. So how do you get past that? How do we get past that? It's by having conversations like this and empathy in reality. Right. You know, being vul Authentic vulnerable to each other. Yep. Absolutely. You know? Well, are you speaking of, like, spouses, right? everyone it could be even in a relationship when you are yeah, getting you to know to someone yeah, you don't you have, don't to, be have to be married no. there like are boundaries even so yeah. even you like that are starting in right, a relationship so my relationship is new. you know what i'm and saying that's not way, me. she's very blessed to have you because if you have that mindset about you say that her again? body you're very blessed no he didn't he yeah i need mean, i'm gonna play that for her <laughs> <laughs> and and then <laughs> again it's stuck to what you said you know she she's trying to cover up and you're just very graceful and and you but you're patient too it sounds mm -hmm. like because some men are not graceful they're less or patient that. no yeah. i'm very i'm a very patient guy and i, I learned pa i learned patience during my whole mindset journey but i, I still don't know if i'm handling it correctly because i've never been through this so mm -hmm. i don't i don't communication well no <laughs> and so the one thing that me and her do have is communicate like we communicate that's and because awesome. that, that was that's one of my was one of my so-called rules when we got together i said i don't oh, care how man, hard no, but I there said, no I don't, I, no, listen, no, this, or requ this is a requirement. Yes, it is. No, you can't do that. Yes, either. it is. Listen, go, you listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. So no, this is, is no matter how hard the conversation is, we have to talk about it. We had, you yeah. can't, you can't hold something in. You can't hide it. We have to talk about it because the, you heard me say this a lot. The longer you hold something in, and I learned this in therapy, the, the bigger the explosion. Right. Right. Yeah. So I don't I don't care how hard that conversation is, we're gonna have it. Or maybe and, and not saying or introduce it. Not saying we have to have it right now in the in the heat of the battle, or whatever. Go take your time. If you need some space, you need some time, go take it. But at some point soon within this near whatever, we have to come back to the table and talk about it. Circle yeah. back to it. Right. Yeah. We can't let it drag on for years yeah. or months. Well, with I think also with time. With with time it comes because if you set your your expectations I mean, you know, I'm not saying hi, but if you're already kind of putting it out there and then it's not happening now for whatever reason, it doesn't allow someone to kind of grow comfortably, you know, because it, it takes some time for some people, especially when they're having, oh, know. you know, trauma. If there's been other, you know, issues or maybe they don't know how. And this is all something new. You know, I, we're going to be married 17 years and it's just been the Aww, last, yeah, the last few years that our relationship is very, you know, I think a little bit more um, understanding and our communication is there, you know, um, so it comes with time and really kind of trial and error. Yeah. It, it does. You know? uh, I mean, I mean, you obviously know, I know that I was because you don't know. Yeah. I, I used to be married for 24 years. Yeah. And with my kid's mother, and we're best friends. Like we're, to this day, we're wow. great friends. That, and that doesn't happen with me. It doesn't. Yeah, no, I've it been doesn't. married for eighteen years, and hey. it's real. It's yeah. beautiful, but it is the most raw and real. It is. Anyone can go through. Yeah. Anyone yeah. committed. Yeah. 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 But twenty years or twenty four. Oh my gosh. And yeah. we've known we've known each other. I want to say going on 
a little over 30 years now and we're oh, still great friends awesome. i mean her family is still my family my family is still her family she still hangs out with my sisters i mean and it's, it's a beautiful thing, thing. It is healthy, but we but we it's had, very rare. We had right, but mm-hmm. we also had that mindset going into the divorce. Mm-hmm. Like we wanted our kids to understand, like, hey, everything doesn't work out. Everything doesn't last forever. That's just oh. the reality of life. Nothing lasts forever. Um, but we still we were still family, yeah. and we yeah. that was important for us to always stick together. You yeah. made that your center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. family, yeah, absolutely, your core. And you know, and and Marcy understands that, and she loves the fact that you know. Um, that we're friends and uh but going back to what i was saying with with her like i think i'm handling it correctly yeah i, I, I think i am but I, i'm still not sure though yeah i mean you've never come in here with a black eye so i think you're good <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have all scratches on his right? face he's good he's not coming in here crying be like <laughs> it's gg she hurt me last night beat me up because i i got out of line no, i'm just playing <laughs> I'm just giving them our No, time. but you know what? And it's, it's crazy because I, I I make it a point to call her beautiful every single day. Oh, and she is. But, yeah. but when, when I, like, and I had to explain this to her when I first met her, it's not I'm calling you beautiful because of your outer looks. is you are truly are a beautiful person. And I want her to know that because of all the, you know, trauma she's been through. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I try to uplift her and, and do those things every day. That's yeah. important. Yeah. That's important for yeah. our well-being. It is. It really does. Yeah. And there's not a lot of men that do that either. They'll be the they'll be the first ones comparing you to be like, yeah. man, you don't look like you used to be like, well, I'm not that person that I used to be either. You know they're real when you're looking really tore up from yeah. the head up, head down, and they're just like, oh, baby, oh, I'm like, oh my god, this guy's so hot, it's so real. This no, and you know oh, we no, went out one yeah. night. We went out one night, and she had just came from work, and she was like. I, oh, she was meeting me somewhere. She's like, "Okay, I got to warn you. I'm still in my work clothes." I'm like, whatever. But she came here and I was like, "Fuck, you look better than me right now." I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, are you serious right now? And she was like, "I haven't taken a shower or nothing." Yeah. I was like, "You are amazing." Like, yeah. <laughs> I know my husband's like that too. When we go out and I get all dressed up, he's like, I don't know. You just, you look different, but it's because I'm usually with no makeup and a bun. Mm. Even at our meeting yesterday, I had no makeup and a bun. And my husband's like, dang girl, what's up? What's (laughs) cracking? But I think that's why he keeps me all giddy. You know, even yesterday when he was leaving and we were in the middle of a meeting, how many kisses did he give me? Like. That was Two cute. Though. Yeah, me and Lisa were laughing at you. It was just so cute how they how they did that. Yeah, like seriously. Okay, baby. They was like like high school kids. Like, okay, give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> he's on leaving now. I was like, okay, bye. And oh, he's seen me. Awesome. I, I looked toe up, but in reality, I, I was probably looking sharp. <laughs> they, they love us. I yeah, think my husband's the same way. He's super supportive, and yeah. I can be doing everything that I'm doing without him. Like he really, and and you're right. Like. The longer you're with somebody, mm-hmm. things start becoming more real. And, right. you know, with the way that they accept us and the way that they do the things that they do for us. Like, my mm-hmm. husband um, wasn't much of a cook at the beginning of our, our relationship, our marriage. And now he's like, okay, you're working late. Um, I've got dinner. And he, like, whips up these amazing okay. pieces. And I'm like, where did you get right. this from? He's like, I made it. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. It's yeah. so delicious. And he's just such a team player. He's Because he amazing. deserved that. Yeah. You, Thank you. You know he's what I'm amazing. saying? Yeah. yeah. And that's probably what inspired him. He's like, you know, I'm going to sprinkle a little extra on that. Like, See, that's dope. I love that. And, I, and yeah. I've always been like that, yeah. you know, with, with, with all my relationships. It's always been like 50-50. If, if someone, yeah. like, even like, I'm the type of a husband or boyfriend, whatever, that if you're cooking, I'm going to come behind you and do the dishes. Yeah. Or if you're doing laundry, I'm a you know I'm gonna come back and uh, behind you and I'm a fold. Well, I hear like, you. Love I to love fold. that. Oh, I love folding. It's actually therapeutic for me. I know a lot of people hate folding. Yeah, I love doing laundry. I love, like, yeah, me too. People think I'm crazy. I struggle putting it back. I'm like. People yeah, think I'm crazy. I, I fold that. everything. My my husband, he's probably listening. Sorry, babe. He um he bought these things on Amazon. They're these like little mesh bags. They kind of look like stuff like hampers. Mm-hmm. And he folds. Well, I try to fold as much as I can, but he he'll just like everyone has their own little hamper, and he like puts everything in there. He's like, I'm not. I don't know what you're gonna do whenever you get to. It. But I love doing laundry. Just putting it in there, getting it out. It's warm. It's clean. And you're like, okay. I don't know what it is. I get you. you no, but you you know you know. You know how they said, um, whenever you wake up in the morning, make your bed because it's those little tasks that yeah. you did that okay, I, I, I accomplished one task. Moving yeah. on, right? Yeah. And yeah. and then at the end of the day, when you walk in your room, 
it just feels great, right? I've always done it. I've always made my bed, right? Yeah, that's what and I do too. And doing laundry is kind of the same thing. Yeah, I don't like, like so. When that. I get out of the shower and satisfying. I go to my drawers and I see everything folded nice, like it's just satisfying. It's like it's <laughs> oh, great. No. Like you set. want to do it? I'm set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you increase the shirts, like dang, this is yeah, nice. yeah. yeah. Oh, like, no. I know. Weird see, like that. I hate folding. <gasps> oh no, it's great. I think because I used to have to do it for everyone, you know, and it's like. <laughs> And I had full time work, and I had a cook, and I was like, "Oh hell no!" Now that they're old enough, it's like, "Oh, you walking around with them dirty pants?" Like, "Oh, I feel bad for you." <laughs> hey, you know the, the, the first the first time the, look the first time Marcy spent the night at my house, I was in the shower and I got out of the shower. She literally made my bed, and I was like, "Whoa." Wow. I think that's when I fell in love with her. I was like, "You really made my bed?" And she was like, "Yeah." Was that I, moment? No, because she was, was like, moment? she was like, "Yeah," because I know you like making your bed every morning. And I was like, and she did a great job. It was almost better than me. And I was like, "Wow." She didn't just do <laughs> it, but guy. according to Mike, she did a great job. She did a great job. Yeah, I, was, I, I walked out the shower and I was like, "Wow, you made my bed." And she was it's like, "Yeah." It's those little things. It's yeah, those like that meant nuggets. a lot. Yeah. Okay, Mike. I love that. Yeah, I've never heard see. anyone say something like that. Yeah, that was no. a moment. It, yeah, it was. It was like, mm-hmm. well, it was one of the moments. I mean, she's done other things, but that was like one yeah. of the moments because I didn't, I didn't ask her. Yeah. She didn't have to. Like, it was just yeah. something. Like, I'm a big guy on effort. Like, if you do something, I don't have to tell you. Like, that's just big for me. Yeah. Like, you just do it because you Action want to do it. Louder than the words. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I, I think I've told you that that's how she is. Like, Marcy, like, she doesn't um, express herself. She shows you. She's big on action. She's little on words, big on actions. What was her love language? We were talking about that. Oh, touch. Oh, like mine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, it's funny because that's it how too. people, <laughs> it lines up. No, yeah. it does. But in reality, sometimes um, I think couples would be more successful and be more happy, I think, if they understood that it's the little things that go mm-hmm. a long way. It it's the little, little things, the little you know, things. not showing up all the time and being the baddest in the room. Be like, yeah, but your attitude stinks. <laughs> What's the point of beauty, being beautiful on the outside and on the inside? It is ugly. Yeah. And, and realizing, you know, hey, my shortcomings are these. Yeah. By doing something to make it better. Like, you yeah. know, with his cooking, you know, he's kind of like, oh, how can I help you? How can I help support you? Um, I know your time is valuable. You have less of it. Mm-hmm. So he fills in those gaps for me. And it makes our family function. Mm-hmm. And it makes it work. Like, yeah. you know, you can't have a factory without the machinery. And it's mm-hmm. one of those things where he fills in those gaps, um, you know, with homeworks or like laundry or just all the things. It's it's wild and he's so grateful. He's amazing. And doesn't that make them even more sexier? Like, it ooh, does. that's right, my back. Good. Hey. It still works out. I'm like, yeah, it, right. <laughs> You're yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a reason. Now I know why. And I, honestly. Where do I sign the contract for another 20 oh, Okay. <laughs> that is so true. That's it's dope. so true. Or even, let's say it's not where you want it to be. Well, how do you help them grow? You know, by nagging at them, it's not going to make them any better. Yeah. But holding their hand and showing them how it is, yeah. that's going to get them to where you want them to be. Be their number one supporter. Be their number one belie- yeah. you know, believer. It's like, you know, Brian's playing softball next weekend mm-hmm. from work and i was like i'm gonna be there with my jersey Aww. i'm your number one fan i go all your co-workers gonna know who your <laughs> wife is <laughs> that's dope i love that though. you know what i'm uh, saying but it's all the way all the way it's it. me and you like even yesterday i was showing off his little ward and, yeah you know like a like a what did he get an award for? He got an award at work for Aww. recognition. And I want to say only two people did. And the other person was out of state. And he came home with his, with his certificate and his bag. And it was a really nice little award, you know. And That's I mean, so cool. he works at Northrop. So it is a, it's a big facility, yeah. a big yeah. place. And to so be recognized. To be picked right. out as. You know. And yeah. I said. There's something he did that was stand out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, he's he's a great guy. So Work cool. ethic is just phenomenal. Out of this world, you know. Sometimes it's a little too much at home. It's like even at work, not just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you start seeing them pace around. You're like, oh, yeah, into that cleaning thing. Oh my god! Don't get him started with cleaning. Oh my god! He really is attention to detail. No, yeah, I'm, um, I'm 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 a little. Uh, he's he is. Mike OCD. stops at his bed. No, yeah. I'm I'm a little OCD too. Like, yeah. I don't like oh like God. if I know something is right there. 
I literally, when I walk in my house, I look at everything. I know if something's off or off center because oh because I have that God. design background. If something is not symmetrical, uh, don't uh, tell me because I'm gonna start. No, it, 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 it bothers <laughs> She's me. Like this, I'm I'm, I'm literally like, like walking around, like, push it to the limit. Like, this goes on this side of the line, like like <laughs> push it to yeah. the limit. <laughs> now you gotta move his mic a little bit. I know, right? No, I do. I got no wonder you're like Sandra. When you're gonna sit down, you're gonna sit like this, and your mic's gotta be. Mm. Uh, I even I'm got, joking. I got, I got after I got after Marcy like the, one of the first times she was at my house, and um, she put her purse on the floor next to, next to the bed, and I walked all the way around the bed. I was like, "But you can't put your purse on the floor." Like, That's bad luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, is I, it a cultural I, thing? Yeah. I don't know. I, I was always I taught heard, that. Yeah, I was taught that. Yeah, but yeah, girl, she, I, but she, she she's like Latina. This. She's Latina. She didn't know, and I was like, "Wait, like you can't put the first I'm gonna say this shit to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I'll hold my bag. Uh, well, it's yeah, not I'm, gonna be on my lap. It's gonna be over. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. Whenever she puts things down, I'm always like moving it. Like, no, yeah, this goes here. Yeah, no bags. I, yeah, I'm hanging up all her stuff. Like, <laughs> I don't know. No, he is. My my husband is like that. Although we balance out because I'm like, yeah, whatever, do it. If it makes you happy, yeah. do <laughs> it. You know, yeah. Less work for me. But I mean, for the most part, our our house is clean. Our you well, know, no, it's, great house, really. yeah, it's it's in. We don't have a lot, so I don't have too much to worry about, and mm. I love that about my, my house is just under construction right now. Yeah. It looks still looks nice though. It's under construction, but it still looks nice. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. From what I know about Mike, under construction, I don't believe it's probably really put together. But, and I he mean, thinks it's under construction. <laughs> no, it is. No, because I don't, my floors, I ripped up all my carpets. So it's all cement. I oh. haven't done my floors yet because um, I, cause I wanted a certain way and I haven't, I haven't had time to do it yet. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, everything's still like neat and clean. Yeah. I can't stand a dirty house. I know. And Sandra, can you tell us about this that you brought us though? Hey guys, she brought us some lavender Yeah, she brought us gifts. Oh. And yeah. they smell phenomenal. Yes. By the way, guys. I know. Thank you. I um Oh thank you. No, thank no. you for the coffee too. I mean I know. Starbucks. Cheers. Like yes. happy Friday. Yay. <laughs> Super sweet. Thank you. Yes, they are a jolt of joy and we are grateful for them. Oh, thank you. I'm grateful yeah. for you guys. Um it is for headaches and migraines. It has um essential oils, lavender. I think one of your guys' is, is like mint, deep Mine muscle is mint. mint. Mm. Yeah. Um so it's helpful. It's helpful to kind of center yourself and you can roll it on your wrist or like behind your um mm. ears or your temples to help relieve that tension. So it's good. I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, yeah, I can't no. wait to Definitely hear how it helps. It. Yeah, when we visit the lavender field, there was a bunch of them and there was one for <laughs> For also, I think it was um, like not depression, but like moods or something. Mm. And I was teasing my daughter. I was like, "Come here, let me let me put it on you, so when you come around, you yeah, bring me positivity." Like, oh she was gosh. like, "Really?" So that's what actually it reminded me of of me and her playing with it. But it does help also, like with headaches, headaches and things like migraines. that. Yeah, check out my highlights. I have post op teas, but they're not just for post op. Um, mm. They're like for inflammation or for like gut help and things like that. Yeah. It's not natural herbs that you can even purchase on like Amazon and stuff. Mm. Um, so like even for, um, hangovers, <laughs> there's, there's a tea there. <laughs> there's a, there's a tea in there, like a recipe for like hangovers. Mm. Um, there's also post-op inflammation or for pain. Um, I know like the go-to is often like aspirin and things like that, but I think if we explore herbs a little bit more, I think it's yeah. a little more natural and healthier. So Sandra, since I won the gift card, right, the gift certificate, right. um, for the wrap, just to give our listeners kind of a little insight, you know, um, would it be okay to kind of, I guess I should be asking myself this, would it be okay to post my pre and post of yeah, treatment? Just absolutely. To, I, I know that um, I'm a little behind on posting. No, it's okay. But, um, she does that a lot. Yeah. yeah, I try. Um, so, yeah, if you're, you're to consent with that, I'm yeah. happy to put you on. I love showing, you know, the yeah. progress people make. You're, um, you're not following her? On IG? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you... That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So yeah, there was one that I, I commented. I was like, damn, that girl looks... And you're like, yeah, but they had... I think they had work done, right? Yeah, see, on the, that the one. Thing, yeah. That's the thing with, like, post-op. Um, not everyone gets certain results, right? Yeah. And so that one, I think it was the tummy tuck one? 
Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah. But I have some in there for detox body wraps. You're gonna see like a lot of women get like start getting um, skin tightening on the upper abdomen mm-hmm. or like lower abdomen, and you can see like the lift. It's wild. It's a beautiful thing. But yeah, I I even love to record. Maybe we can get David or someone to do a little recording. Um, yeah, that would be cool. So I'm down for that. Okay, I mean, especially good. because sure. I already have it and I've been sleeping on it. So I'm gonna put it to the test. I have an event coming up um, in May. Um, so it'll be at some time in April, guys, that let me, let me get into the gym a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. I'll give you, I'll give you some tips. I'll forward Okay, cool. And then. So look out for that, guys. Yeah. We're going to put it to the test. Yeah. So before you get in, because I know you want to do your, um. Oh, no. Crusher goals. I I want to ask her one question. I love hearing crusher goals. I love it. I'm like, what's the crusher goal this But No, because I I have another question. And we're going to go over it. It doesn't matter, though. Because I want to know, what was your biggest adversity that you had to overcome starting your business? Mm. Um, gosh. Because your story is so deep. Yeah, I love it. No, you have an incredible story, and I love your story. Thank you. Thank you again for sharing that. But what was one of your biggest adversities that you had to go through? I think I'm currently going through it right now mm. um, where I love teaching. I love, you know, feeling like I'm making an impact and feeling it's wild, feeling like – and just the op- just feeling blessed, mm. like – you guys have no idea feeling blessed that I can go in every day and either make an impact with students that need it. This diverse group of students who are at risk, at risk youth. And that's an understatement Mm -hmm. because I'm in the classroom and I'm with students and I know that like there's always going to be a teacher that's going to be able to impact them and touch their heart and help them make good choices and things like that. But I know that, you know, being at the school that I teach at in Lancaster, um, it's real. And you have some real hard situations mm-hmm. where I feel like I've lifted a student out of that. I've lifted their families out of that. I've been an essential part to someone's recovery or to a student's emotional state. Um, After the counselor, I'm often the go-to person for many of my students, or they don't really refuse to talk to the counselor, and they're like, can I just go see Ms. Alanis Frutos right now? That's the only person I want to see. And I'm like, wow. And to be able to... great. My biggest adversity, Mike, is feeling like, but I'm also impacting women, and Mm. I'm also helping women, and I'm also becoming, with God's blessing, essential to many women um, post-op. And I'm filling in these big gaps for many of them. And they're recovering. And I had a part to do with that. I had something to do with that. And that's a blessing. It's a feel-good thing to know that, wow, this girl reached her goal, like, after her surgeries. Um, and I had something to do with that. That, you know, I'm at a crossroads where I'm like, I love to teach, but I'm also loving what I'm doing. And I'm going to have to make choices because there's a moment where I'm like, I'm a human being. I'm, I'm a right. mom mm-hmm. and my priorities. Um, and I want to do both. And it's hard because yeah. I want to be in two worlds. Um, and that's my biggest maybe problem right now. I don't know. Many people would see it as how is that a problem? It's, it's not a problem. I think more than anything, it's an opportunity. But it is a little bit yeah. something I'm working through right now. It's finding that balance. And there is no balance. Yeah. I know people talk Trial about balance. Error. For me, it's not. I don't. I don't. I know my balance is my husband. My husband's that one yeah. that helps balance everything out. But um, I do. Um, I, I'm, I am thinking of maybe making a change for next year, mm. next school year. I don't know what that's going to look like. So I guess maybe that's where mm. my adversary is currently right now. Um, just. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say it's an adversity, but it maybe it's something I'm working through. Like yeah, and that's okay. Right. That's so. OK. No, it, and it is OK. And, and, and I can see both worlds because, you know, with the teacher side of it, you're 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 teaching the, our youth, which is incredible. Like, you know what I mean? And then on, on the other side, the body scoping side, you're, you're dealing with the you know women and adults. So, I mean, there is two different worlds. Yeah. But they're two different amazing things you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's oh, your really well-being. Is. It yeah. is. But I think my common denominator with both is that I'm essential mm. and um and I'm making an impact. Mm-hmm. You are. Yeah. And I think that's a blessing. Like, it's it's a beautiful thing. And I just, um, I want to do both. But I, 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 I'm, you know, 
I'm kind of tipping on some ends. Um, tipping in a good way because I, I feel gravitated to both worlds and I but I know that I want to make a go uh, I want to go ahead and make a change so stay tuned there's a lot coming there really yeah. is um, business wise um, a lot of things coming and I just feel like I'm going to continue making that impact like on so many other levels besides you know my business and how, how old are your daughters um, my oldest daughter is 17 Okay. And then I have a fourteen-year-old. <laughs> I have a fourteen-year-old son, and then a ten-year-old daughter. Okay. Yeah. So the seventeen-year-old is is she looking to get into what you're doing, or have that been discussed? No, she is. She's working through. Um, she's applying to colleges, or she's already applied, and so she's getting her responses now. She wants to go into the FBI for psychology. She wants to. Oh. She wants to. Um, she's part of like the FBI junior scholar That's thing. Yeah. 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 She's so she just got certified for um she let me show you a picture of her. Um she just got certified last year for a fire tech program. When will she be 18 by the way? She will be 18 um in November. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. I was going to say cuz she could apply for the uh, certification of applied positive psychology cuz it's 18 I and over. At that. I yeah. At that yeah. that would have been great for her. Honestly, it's great tools, and when you're talking about your well-being, that's actually feeling good, struggling well, and functionally effectively. And that's where people get thrown off like, oh, how do we struggle well? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're kind of doing. 1% progress every day mm -hmm. equals 36 to 37%. Um, 30, 36 to 37%. 37% improvement in a year. But, but can I say this? Because uh, I'm looking at your, your family, and I'm looking at from what your grandmother, what, what your grandma went through, and your mom and your parents went through, and what you went through, and now your daughter's like, you guys are steady evolving. Straight to Straight the top. Straight up. Like, that's dope that she's doing that. Thank you. She's, she's worked really hard. I'm trying yeah. to find a, a picture of her. Um, she's, she's just worked really hard. Um, yeah. she mm -hmm. finished this fire tech program and still is so interesting. Um, she had some boys like, what are you doing here? Like, when are you going to give up? Cause it, it's some hard, some hard stuff. Um, she had to go through to do the fire tech program as a junior last year. And, um, some boys were just kind of like shove her around and she just, just, yeah, so proud of her. She just buckled down and was like, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> They're just when igniting her fire. Keep, yeah. keep pushing. Yeah, and that was something that she made a point on her college applications. Like, mm. I can't believe that still today uh, with the women's movement, I'm still having to work through some of these comments, some of these stereotypes. Mm. Like, oh, you know, she, let me, I, I have to, I have to show no, you guys. She's just... And actually, we talk about this a lot. Ashley, um, I know that earlier you said, you know, you should always do 110%. Absolutely. However, in reality, Ashley? Ashley, Ashley Khan. Oh, I thought what you were talking just, about. I, no, I, I thought you I'm just like, called her you, Ashley. <laughs> no, no, no. I know. I know she's but not who's Ashley. <laughs> so Ashley Khan is some. It's an artist that oh. we had on the show. Okay. Um, and she says that in reality, she puts 80%. Because yeah. she gives herself that 20% to mm. grow, right? Because you don't want to over, what is it? Well, you always want to leave uh, space for growth. For growth, right. right. Um, right. But I mean, I get like I get what, what, what Ashley's saying. I get what Sandra's saying. Like You always want to give 100%, right? But I guess in, in, in reality yeah. is you always want to leave that. Like I always that say that. Like, I, give, I, give, I always want to, I want to be at 80%. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I want to I leave myself that 20 percent for growth because there's always yeah. growth i don't want to ever feel like i'm at 100 percent. it's like what i used to say i said this on a show before where i don't like the word goals right because if you if you set a goal for yourself and you reach that goal then what yeah yeah and that's yeah. i think why like, i've been feeling better I, it's like how they say you know life's not a destination it's mm -hmm. like it's a journey yeah it is. i don't want to get to a destination i want to keep going yeah right it's so true i think that's why i was just like Eh, you know, I'm not at a hundred percent, but no, I'm right. But it's not saying enough. it's not saying for people who go out and give only eighty percent of oh, your not effort. At all. No, no, you no, no, give a hundred and ten percent effort. Yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So it just it's just you know how um, I don't know the correct wording for it. You get what I'm saying. I feel you. you feel I feel you. <laughs> hey, oh my goodness, she yeah. is beautiful. Oh wow, yeah. 
Oh, wow. Get it. Yeah. Oh, my she's, God. Look at this. That is like. Oh, my like, God. I don't think, yeah. Wow. She's amazing. Like, she's just. Yes. And I said, you know what? Um, you know, she beat out. You know, they had like competitions, like weekly competitions. Oftentimes, some of the boys were just like, mm, you know, we've got this. And she's like, said nothing. Actions speak loud. We're mm. smoked it. That's dope. And she was like. <laughs> just watching behind and i'm like you know what did you encourage them she goes i did i said congratulations afterwards after they came before me and i'm like okay well you know well, that's great but she's like i just i'm always gonna come through i'm always yeah. gonna pull through and i'm always gonna you know do the best yeah. that i can and i'm like there you go and not only that but probably stigma because she's gorgeous stunning she so they probably thought like beauty you know, what What can you do? And she definitely proved them wrong. She did. She that's did. Yes. that's had, dope. Like, I, I, love, I love seeing kids like that. Cause I, you know, I've worked with kids all my life. And my daughter, my, yeah, my daughter like. is similar to that. So my daughter, um, between the age of 10 years old and um, I want to say 19, when she graduated high school or 18, I should say, um, she ran track. Mm -hmm. And she always wanted to be like her mom and um, be the, like this track star because my ex-wife, she used to run with Mariam Jones, you know, and wow. she went like for, far in track. So That's Kira, amazing. my daughter, wanted to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So her race was the 200 and the 400 relay. And um, she used wow. to like every Friday night, you know, on Saturday morning we had track, right? So every Friday night, Kira would be on YouTube, like, YouTube and all the girls um, races that she knows she has to run. She has studied them. She looked at all their times. And when she first was doing that, I was like, hey, what are you doing? And she was like, oh, I'm looking at their times for the people that I'm going to run Smart. against tomorrow. And Smart. I was like, who told you to do that? And she did. And this was at 12 years old. Mm. So she did this at 12. And I was like, who told you to do that? She was like, nobody. Did she it. knew. And, right, right. and so every Saturday morning, she would go out there and I was walking with her on the field one day because I was a coach. Like, there was no way I could like sit in the stands for back, yeah. all those hours of track. Oh, I know. <laughs> right? Boring. I, so, yeah, so I, I was walking with her on the field, right? And I saw her do this one day. She was like, okay, there she is. There she is. And I was like, who are you looking for? She was like, oh, I'm seeing who she actually showed up. So I, I know where she runs. I know where she runs. And I was like, damn. Mm -hmm. And she killed it. Yeah, she should. Like in her high school, she got her name on the building when she was in junior high school before she even went to the school. Wow, so when she went to high school, awesome. the track coach, um, she didn't show up for uh, the first day of practice. And the coach ran into her after school. He was like, hey, where was you? She was like, oh, I didn't know I was on the team. And she, he was like, Kira, your name is on the building. You automatically on the team. <laughs> There's no question. Right? Like, yeah, it's like, so I'm proud of her. Like, awesome. she, she's amazing. Oh God, but I, I love kids that on. put in that determination. <laughs> and kind of yeah, we're going to have to have a conversation with her at some point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. She wants to go and do something with, like, um, FBI and their, their behavioral science program. Yeah. That's dope. So she wants to identify traits of murderers and things like that. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty intense. Oh yeah, it's that's definitely awesome. mental health and reading yeah. um, human or human behavior. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So she's really into that. Um, so yeah, she's taking a. She's graduating in um, in May. She's graduating with an AA and her high school diploma. So. Oh um, okay. Oh, so she went. She goes to. Mm -hmm. um, Soar, yeah, 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 that's the beauty of that school. It's phenomenal, it's although intense, it's not athletic, hardcore, yeah. but academics, and you do come out with an AA. Yeah. So I love that about the Antelope Valley that they do provide that. It hasn't been easy, mm -hmm. and it's just like wow. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine at her age doing. This. Both we of just them. didn't have those opportunities growing up. I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, at school, um, at community. So that's a blessing. Oh, my goodness. So let's get into your so crush So my goals. crush your goal, here it is. And this one is dope. And again, it's right on the money. When you're in your lane, there is no traffic. When you are in your lane, y'all, there is no, no traffic. traffic. I I've, yeah, I've had to you. tell I my kids that. that. Like, man, you need to stay in your lane. And once you're in your no, lane. You know what? And that's why I tell people. You. Stay in your lane. Get out of other people's lane because there's so much so much traffic you don't belong in here. Like go to your lane. <laughs> yeah. I and honestly it yeah. clear up traffic. Yeah. That makes so much sense. I wow, I love that. Be, I think we have to be like horses. You know, they have those blinders. blinders yeah. Like, you know what? Just 
stay in your lane, do stay you yeah. for you. Exactly. Yeah. Hey. Whatever you do, do for you. Yeah. Wait, who go. who said that? <laughs> sure, mixed it in there. <laughs> and that's Ava Duvernay. Dang, they got Ava some Duvernay. some fucking. I don't know names. who that is. That's Ava. That's Ava. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ava saying to stay in your lane. <laughs> All right, Sandra. So you know what's next. Words of advice. Yeah. On, your words of wisdom. Okay. You All have right. an amazing story. <laughs> um, oh, thanks, Mike. What you do is incredible. Um, I, I love. I don't. Want, I loved your quote. Um, well, not your quote. Your mm-hmm. video. That one video where you said, "Who am I showing up for?" And you do. You show up for the girls at your school um, or your kids. I love that. But I want a new one. Well, I'm still showing up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's great. No, I'm still showing up, but I have uh, more of more of a community that I show up to. Um, I think, um, I think I feel uh, the deeper I get into my business, um, I feel more of a calling, a deeper sense of responsibility to educate women more, um, a deeper sense of urgency to get that missing information out. And get it out in a way that is not discouraging, um, a way to get that information out in the most loving and caring way, because we need that as women. And I think um, carrying out a message of love, kindness, grace, and staying in your lane, and that that includes every woman, whether you're a body sculptor or whatever it is that you're doing in life, you know, just staying in your lane taking care of your house, you know, taking mm. care of your house, your house of beauty, because everyone's beauty is different and unique, and that should be your strength. A, a part. I think assess, prioritize, plan, and execute. Mm. You know, with you. Everything internally, everything to do with you, you assess yourself, you prioritize yourself at whatever cost, however you need to, and, every, and that's going to look different for everyone. And you need to plan. I think um, planning for who you're going to be tomorrow, how you're going to plan for next week, I think um, it's going to lead you to feeling like you're progressing, like you're moving forward, like you're doing something good for you and for those around you. I think executing um, what you say you're going to do. And when you don't, be graceful with yourself. Mm. You know, Love yourself. There's more, but <laughs> oh, <I laughs> give yourself that, that space. Oh, Yay. thank you. Wow, I love that. Yeah. Wow. Dropping that knowledge. She is. What about you, OG? What you going to hit us with? <laughs> After that, I can't follow that up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Like. No, I can't. Uh. Oh, what? the music, come on. Come on. <laughs> I can't follow that up. No, this is, this was, this is Women's Month. I mean, yeah. history must. That's right. We're going to end that with Sandra. <laughs> oh, love yeah. you guys. This is yeah. an amazing space. No, thank thank you so much. Thank you for what you do. Yes. What you do. I thank you guys thank for what you, you yeah. do. I yes. can't wait to come no. in, girl. <laughs> Get that little dip, little Look, pool. <laughs> our, our thing, our, 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 our show is One Life. Um, it's your story. Yes. This is your story, and you have an amazing story. Yeah. I, thank you again so much for sharing that story. Um, I love the name House of Beauty. Uh, I love everything, how you came up with it, um, with your grandmother and what you're doing. And it shows from your daughter. Like I just said, you guys are steady evolving, like from your generations. Like it's incredible. And that's why I love these stories. Yeah. I see it. I actually want to give myself a shout out. Go ahead. I just got my little, you know, sweater. My one life I sweater. Love it. So I yeah, love it. my husband actually ordered them online, and he was like, "I got you a sweater." I was like, "Oh shoot, okay." Oh, uh, you didn't know he was doing it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I didn't know he was doing it either. Yeah, and then I was like, you know what? That's that's dope. He can goes, we order online? Yeah, yeah. So you can actually go online. You can go onto the website and get your gear. You know, like it's manifesting that mindset that you want, right? Oh uh, yeah, I have an apparel store. Um, yeah. But I, and I don't promote it. A lot. I don't know why I don't. But I don't see all the orders all the time because I have I have a system that does does everything by itself. So I don't oh, nice. see the yeah I don't see the orders. Yeah. Um, but I think I saw something came through my email and I saw Gotti, but it wasn't your name or his name, so it didn't really grab my attention. Oh, 
Oh. Until you, um, I think you said something. I sent you a picture. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, shit, that was them. Yeah, that's us. And it's nice. Even his sweater, He, we were both rocking it, actually, today. Coincidentally, I was like, I was going to wear my jacket. Oh, he has one, too? Yeah, so he so, got Yeah, I don't know what you guys yeah. ordered. So yeah, he I got didn't a sweater know that. Okay, as well. It's so. like mindset, everything you think yeah. you become. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. You know, it's key. Mindset is key. Yeah, you know, absolutely. if you could imagine 100%. it, you can become it, right? So where can they find you, Sandra? Yeah. Where? Yeah, where can they find like your IG? Instagram. Oh, I'm sorry. See, you know, because <laughs> it's hard like to her. it's hard to find you because I look. I looked everywhere. Uh, I'm at House of Beauty Body Sculpting yeah. with underscore house underscore of underscore beauty underscore body sculpting. On IG. On Instagram. On Instagram. Yep. Yeah. Wow, thank you. And you're mobile too, right? I am currently because we can talk about it later, some other plans. Okay. There you go. So that's a beauty, guys. She is mobile. So there are no excuses for like even me that I am constantly on the move and active and right. don't have to I'm make the time. It. I'm here yeah. for you. I'm here for you guys. I'm here for all of it. And um, it's a lot of stuff coming, a lot of stuff. I work in silence. Um, but yeah. I do want to say that. Um, but you do gr great work in Thank silence. You. Thank you. you. You're yeah. definitely making an impact. Yeah. Oh and whatever. God, means so much to me, Mike. Thanks. And I know what you said. Like you, you're in a you're in a crossword right now. But whatever you do, just know that you know this is your your book, your story, right? So whatever that chapter is, you have to close. You you've already made a huge impact, and you should feel good about that. Mm -hmm. So whatever your next chapter is, again, be be grateful you know, um, embrace it and just continue on your journey because you are you already made a huge impact oh and gosh. you're going to continue to make an impact. Yay. Thank you guys. Well, Appreciate you. you. I love what you guys do for the community. Mike, I've told you, you yes. guys are a light in our community and we need that. I, and I appreciate Believe that. me, I hear it. I feel it in my classrooms and we need stand up people like you guys, the mm -hmm. light that you guys bring, the energy, your guys' energy, your education, these conversations, it's touching home. It's, you know, hitting hearts and it's getting it out to the world. And, and we need that. No, and, and we're actually about to start our workshops <laughs> for our we're kids, the, too. We are oh, teaching right. the youth yeah, to do youth. what we do. Yeah. Well, maybe you guys can come out to the school no, and, and do something because yeah. um, there's a lot of missing gaps in schools today. Yeah. And a lot of teachers are exhausted. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. another conversation. A lot of teachers are exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of teachers don't want to volunteer, not because they don't care or they don't want to, but they're tired. So, yeah. you know, maybe opening up something like that. To yeah. No, that's to exactly, that's exactly what, we're, what, what our we do. bigger goal is to come mm -hmm. to, to bring it to the schools. Amazing. So, yeah. We need it. Yes. We're looking forward to it. More to come. Yeah. More to come. Yes. All right, y'all. All right. Be, be well. Be well. Yeah.